long break, folks, but we are back, hopefully, with a very great game for you, Villanova versus University of Hawaii. So, from Twin Salty, still here, ready to be the action of our, our final game tonight. Yeah, can't wait to see what, you know, this game can bring us as two, I would say, very different teams in a lot of ways. That was Hawaii's infamous largest roster, I believe, in EGFC. Uh, you get the good and the bad, you know, it's very one or the other you know as of recent it's a lot better this split i would say with consistency and then villa you know they got their first map win i think it was like a week or two ago against st peter so trending in the right direction as well curious to see what this game has up its sleeve and for villanova you have to have that tempered excitement you know that again with a team like hawaii you're like oh we can get more map wins here we could very much come up you know looking at least a little bit better but you know, you, you know as much as we do, perhaps maybe as much as Hawaii does, what kind of game you're going to get out of them tonight. Yeah, like, the only team, and the only people that know exactly what we're getting from Hawaii tonight is Hawaii themselves, right? Because, they, again, they like to change things up, they like to try something new, and I'm Jake Tower. I think they're really going to get creative with some of the things they're going to run. And as we look at the maps, you know, Lee Jake Tower, as I said, Hollywood, Volskaya, we had to Route 66 and Busan, if we need to. But, you know, for Li Zhang, it is such a diverse map. We've seen a lot of different looks throughout the day on this stream. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something new, especially from Hawaii. But, you know, maybe Villanova has something new as well. And I don't know about you, Twin Salty, but I only saw Gardens and Night Market last game. So I'd be excited for a little bit of Command Center, a little bit of that, that close quarters, Reinhardt, Tenzi, maybe something along the lines of a Jacques the sim you see fairly often uh, in Li Zhang some areas more than others. I don't think you see it as much in gardens unless people are really tr trying to exploit first. Um, but still a viable option there. Granted that those fights can take a little bit long in a white room at command center. And overall, just a, a nice change of pace. Li Zhang is one of those maps that I say you can play in a bunch of different ways just depending on which map pop first. Yeah, it really is like as you say, control center, probably got the bro with the center of the junk and then you know at gardens especially of recent a lot of dive a lot of uh, wrecking ball diva with some pharmacy in the mix and then night market is like a hodgepodge of both you can see either one we saw earlier today we rush versus the ball comp the ball comp won out in the end but you never know you get so many different looks with night market i'm very to see what the team have up and you know what they have up their sleeve is because these teams again we have one more week after this for the regular season. Teams are trying to get prepared for that next step, especially Hawaii, who are right in the middle of the pack. Yeah, the, the middle of the pack's perhaps the most uncomfortable place to go, because, you know, when you're at the bottom, you have a little bit of breathing room and knowing that you can't drop any lower. At the top of the pack, you know that, well, you're, you're going to feel an invincible, untouchable, maybe, but middle of the pack's a lot of room for that, that movement. So Hawaii, as you said, going to be looking to stay on top of it. For University of Hawaii, fortunately, at least as far as I see it, Mostly going to be very familiar names, which spells good news for Hawaii, I think, Twin. Yeah, I believe the only one I don't know if we've seen as of recent weeks is going to be uh, Vitaki. But other than that, yeah, we've got Napotis, Math Dealer, Wombology, Akamai. They've all been playing, so I think Hawaii's finally settling down on a solid roster. Like, all right, we're going to run these guys no matter what, and we're going to go from their Villanova. They're going to be running that rush, but they're not going to run the Lucio with it. That is a little bit of an interesting call. A little bit more outputting damage, but that Reinhardt going to play a little bit more passive, especially against the ball comp from Hawaii. Interestingly enough, neither of these teams is going to bring, be bringing that sim out, so it's going to be about the raw hero move speed as to which one will get on point first. Of course, we can see that it's going to be University of Hawaii. And that means that Villanova is going to have a tougher time trying to push through here. We see it already. Matt Thieler on that wrecking ball causing quite the distraction, putting some pressure, especially on those weaker, more vulnerable support, getting popped up into the air, taking that damage as well. It's not going to be a great and most comfortable spot for you. Hawaii content right now to just drain these resources out. Reinhardt Shield's looking thin. The immortality field already goes down. A wild pin trying to come in from the Blue Falcon. Not going to be connecting how it ends up feeding away their life and... Villanova gets the initial kill, but it's not going to be followed up. Yeah, not able to follow it up as a great headshot is going to go astray, and the effects of it will not work. 
This is the issue with Villanova's comp right now is, yes, there's a lot of damage coming through. You really can't sustain during the fight, though, as yes, Hawaii, you know, on paper has less healing, but they're more just going to poke at you and consistently uh, do the math deal is going to run around. So while Akamai just trying to get those health packs, they're not relying on River God and Vitaki for that much healing and compared to a Villanova where they're counting on healing for everything. And so they can just collect down every single time we see it in this fight, just kill after kill two going for math dealer and they can just continue holding this choke point and Villanova, unless something changes, they're going to be in trouble. One of the benefits of University of Hawaii is you might expect them to not have as much healing out from those supports, but everybody on the team is running a very fast character that if they need to, can take different angles. Go in, go in for apparently a double kill off the pulse ball. Both supports now down for the side of Villanova. That's going to be a very quick fight. You got to anticipate, but like I said, anybody can just go run, get those health packs, come back, refresh, into the fight before Villanova even notices they're gone. Yeah, I believe we have a uh, disconnect from the biology of Hawaii, so hopefully not too long of a pause, but, you know, Akamai, I, I, we didn't even get to see the pulse bomb, but you get both supports. Like, that is exactly what you want from it. Take out two. Like, uh, Villanova already is struggling in the heels department with this composition. You just, you can't. Uh, you kick them when they're down. And it's just, Villanova, this is what we we're afraid of seeing, right? It's the Villanova that just can't get over the pump, right? They just can't seem to win this fight. You know, they get the opening pick early on, and I just wonder eventually if they're going to be able to get it done this series again. We saw it at St. Peter's. They want a map. They can do it. We know they can. But I think Hawaii as well is showing that they're not here to mess around. They're trying to improve to 7-8. and eight. One thing I, I'm especially concerned for is I don't believe I saw it in the kill feed. Villanova should have still had that immortality field online for that pulse bomb, but the bat piece gets taken down. They didn't use it. So unless it was on cooldown, which is the best case scenario, honestly, not the best case scenario for those dragons that get eaten up by Nepotis, it just kind of died to that for no no good reason. Taiga trying to duel this tracer, but he danced around a little bit and... Akamai eventually going to be coming up victorious. Not too surprising, though, Villanova already looking gutted by the time that gets started. Yeah, and it's going to be 100-0 in favor of Hawaii for this first round. I'm pretty sure River God got three that fight. Like, the Zen even tried to get on the kills a little bit in Hawaii. They're looking comfortable as of right now. And, you know, we're going to be coming up just for a second here. And this is... Well, I think that was my jaw hitting the floor when the double pulse came down um but hawaii they're just doing their thing it's kind of like how tennessee was in the last game their expectation from the outside point of view is to take care of business and look great and so far so far no big issue and aside from the tech that we've been seeing yeah, now he's been seen. the biggest obstacle yeah. in hawaii so far but as i'm i always say it if you're gonna lose somebody this is the point, particularly right here when you're in between maps where nobody has to worry about the run back, where nobody has to worry about dropping yep. that ult charge. This is exactly where you want to do it. So at least Hawaii are, are what, one for two on well-timed? So apparently I'm getting work no, from our production. It was Villanova. So I guess one for one on both sides now as far as those two issues go. Yeah, and that, it's, it's going to happen. You have a team out at the heat East Coast in Villanova, and then you have Hawaii. There's going to potentially be a little bit of disconnect just because it is the complete opposite sides of the country. Like, you couldn't get more apart. So, there's going to be types just abound. For Villanova, this is the round we at least need to see something on because it's going to favor that rush. We need to see the Lucia. You can't be running the Zap with Ryan's R. It's just not something that works right now. Excuse me, I'm not sure if it's going to work ever before Overwatch 2 comes out. You gotta have that loose suit just with speed aspect. Even if you're not as comfortable on it, then you can push the pace. You can push the agenda. And, you know, maybe it'll work out for them this time as we go back to the action. And they're just not gonna run it, actually. They're gonna run Sigma Hog with the BAP still, but the Mercy in play? I don't... I actually don't mind this from Nova. I tried something new. Trying something new, sure, you can look at it that way, but they're still getting pushed on so incredibly aggressive here. It feels like they don't quite know how they want to play Blue Falcon 
Captain's Shield, and University of Hawaii absolutely going to be capitalizing on that, just taking it to them. Villanova getting pushed back all the way to spawn before the points even unlocked, Twin. Yeah, getting pushed all the way back, and Hawaii can hold this choke, and that's exactly where Akamai and company hold. You can set up the Symmetra turrets. This is going to be a pretty hard defense for Nova to break. It's put, it just gets launched up in the air. Going to try and get out, and with the hands, is able to, but Nova just struggling to look and see if they're going to be able to get in. It's Nate the Cat now on the Zarya to try and get that choke with those bubbles. Gonna be a rip tire coming out from Wombology already, and that's either gonna push Villanova back or get kills. Pushing them back, Zentz takes a dip off the map. Not sure if that was because of the tire. Maybe a bit too intimidating on that one, Twin. I think maybe trying to jump around the outside, I have a feeling what Zen was trying to do, but did it make the jump? Obviously, we're not sure. Oh, and Zen just dies to the Again. turrets. Did they put oh. turrets on the spawn door? They must have. No, they was right there. No. I, I don't know if Zen's just trying to peek out for the rest of the team there, but no. Flux comes in on the backside. Amor is used. Zen's able to get one, but the rest of his team is dying around in this Hawaii, converging the waves all the way around Villanova, and they oh. just have no answers right now. Zen's just tries to ride that tire right down mid, and that's not going to come out successful. It's going to be way too Napoleon. obvious just... for the team. Oh my goodness, Napoleon just finished this off mind first with a punch, with two punches actually, excuse me. A nice accretion on mid-air, the alley-oop going and Blue Falcon will be catching it. Uh, Napotis, uh still be able to get out, doesn't really get punished for that at all. No, oh, he's just like, alright, I'll just let my team know you're coming this way, and now Proton Barrier goes down, everybody goes in, Napotis gets two, and he is just having an all-you-can-eat buffet. And yeah, Zen's just trying to get out at this point, trying to make their way to point. My is gonna try and hide. I don't think they saw him, so oh, he can no. at least touch. I'm not sure. Oh my god, Zen's no gonna cap. No, he's not. He's, they, the immortality, as soon as that immortality field goes down, if you are the caster, you have to know you're not gonna live that. You can't target it, you have to cancel and try to roll away. University of Hawaii going to be coming up victorious. Villanova tried to make a sneaky, crafty play, but you can't get one over that fast on a team like Hawaii anymore. Maybe back in the past, not today's Hawaii. Yeah, not today's Hawaii. Because Hawaii's also been in that boat to where, you know, they try those sneaky little plays once in a while. And Napotas was just, I think, just, you know, having a good time. He's just walking around, like, all right, I'll shoot you from the right side, and I'm going to see you for a bit. I'll be there for one, two, five, so he's grabbing, I'll eventually back. I still get two kills the next fight. No one is having the time of his life. Um, Villanova, on the other hand, not having the time of their lives. And Napotis, 26 eliminations. That is what you call efficiency. And uh, two 100 to zero rounds. And yeah, as it's hard to look uh, not on the negative side for Villanova because, yes, it was not, it, there's not a positive to take out of that round. The one I have is, they're still trying, they're still trying something new, they, they, you know, they had the Zarya to try and give the Symmetra a little bit, the bubbles, progress is progress, but Hawaii, it's very much like the last series, where the team who was fit to win early on, they're showing up, and they're showing up in a good way. You have to agree, you can't expect to go too many other ways to win, but I want to, I want to go back to that note of change, that note of trying something new. Uh, I'm all for Villanova trying something new. Uh, but Villanova, eye contact with me. Lucio better be at least somewhere in that something new. We have not seen it yet, and this is the map where you probably benefit potentially most from bringing them out. So we yeah. we need. I think that, that unless is you're running, I unless you're running the ball account, uh, unless you're running the ball okay. account, which I don't understand why. But if you have any Rhine, please, to Lucio. I as as casters, we're begging you. We're we're begging here. As we say, hey, we want to see Lucio gameplay. Because Lucy is always True. very True. But it it would help. And again, obviously they could run the ball comp, which we saw a lot of success from that today over the entirety of the day. Maybe they're going to run a double bubble. But I think for them, it's, they need to find something they're extremely comfortable with, but is also efficient. Because that is the thing right now where, like, yes, they're comfortable with, you know, they're comfortable with that Reinzar Zen BAP but it's not going to get you the efficiency and the results that you're seeking.
the end of the day, sometimes you have to step in more uncomfortable waters to get to where you need to go. And at this point, I think Villanova needs to go to a map win at some uh, another map win. Would that be the the yeah. second, third, fourth map win of their uh, semester of their season? Yeah, because the only map they've won so far was I think back against St. Peter two weeks ago. So uh, last week, I should say. Um, so you know, like, they're at least again, they know they're probably not coming into this game as the favorites. They like at this point, they know that they're zero fifteen, they're zero six in the East. They know what they're getting themselves into, but the progression has been there tonight. I think a little bit of a regression from last week, as you saw them a little bit more polished against St. Peter's. And I think part of that is Hawaii is such a funky play style to play against, to where you do have to adapt on the fly, because Hawaii are going to throw different looks at you 24-7, and we're going to see another one right now. And there's a Lucio. There's a Lucio. All right. Villanova, we're happy. There's, a, there's a step. They are still in spawn doors, but I'm going to celebrate for a second. Because Hawaii, they're showing the ball comp with, actually, Akamai on the Widow. I would be some Akamai on the Widow. The rest of it is pretty standard with Ball, Diva, Zen, Brig, Tracer. I would love to see as, uh, time to light producer. Can you turn around quick and go, like, they're pushing in? I'm sorry. You're going to see live production here. I would love to see them go <laughs> left side, left side of the stage. There's to that high ground. I think that is exactly where you want to push. Because then you give Taiga and Nate the Cat so much more room to try and uh, get some picks. As well, uh, Nate the Cat and my Frass have swapped roles, I believe. And so is Zen's and uh, Zen's now an off tank as well. So a little bit of a swap. I'm going to be starting things off sharpish with a nice headshot. On the Taiga, it's going to be equalized. One DPS going down for east side. The pile driver sets things up beautifully for University of Hawaii. Math Dealer enabling those pop-ups to come in. And once again, Akamai going to be connecting those shots. That Reinhardt allowed to walk away with, what, 10 HP before the post comes in and gives him a fist and just absolutely walks out. Yeah, it's like, all right, well, we'll let you live for a few seconds, my friend. So, uh, you know, you're on tank now. We have to just bully you a little bit. As Akamai already almost has uh, walls at 87, 80 percent and counting. They're looking for somebody just to peek their head. Zen's now on Winston. Try and dive on Akamai, I would presume. So now, after he gets a shot in the face, from said no. Widowmaker, now gonna try and back up and get some healing before they go in for the full dive. Akamai's gonna see this coming from a mile away. Oh, I will have time to react. We'll have time well, uh, to so poten potentially uh, do something if if the Winston had gotten anywhere close, but Akamai gonna be taking a second one out now that that dive character not as huge of a menace. Wombology gets taken down, but on Tracer, you're going to be back in no time. Yeah, they're going to be back in no time, and I'm pretty sure the other casualty was Vitaki. Oh, excuse me. And they'll be able to be back by the time this fight begins, and now they have mines. They have uh, the Widow Ultimate as well. You can see Akamai just a whole bowl of skits. When I think it was Blue Falcon who's maybe playing a little bit of a dangerous game of Pop the Weasel with the Widowmaker, and now I think even Happy Sparrow's trying to get in to dive the Widow. It seems like now Villanova are just kind of playing eliminate the VIP, where they're just trying to focus on getting that Widow down. And you can see that they're kind of suffering for it. Vitaki, once again, the only member that drops for University of Hawaii. Uh, I tend to wonder if, you know, maybe these early eliminations that are going towards Vitaki, or excuse me, the... Soul elevations going towards Vitaki, or why we haven't seen them as much. Yeah, Vita second or third time Vitaki's died already, and if it was uh, Elaine, the VIP, if it was Vitaki, then you're, you know, you're doing alright if you're Nova, but you still have this Widowmaker who's just popping shots from far, and you really have nothing to do about it. You know, Shatter comes down, knocks down both tanks, gonna de Magnapotus, oh. and well, there's, yeah. I am not sure what Nate was trying to achieve with that Deadeye. We did see him activate it, trying to perhaps lock down something clear off zone. Had the Immortality filled as well, but rolled away out of it, maybe into the line of sight of that Widowmaker. Unfortunate play there from Villanova. And we're going to be seeing a couple more swaps come through. My first going to be going on to the Winston, unless we saw them earlier. But I think it was Zen's. Yeah, Zen's on the Winston earlier and then went to the Zarya. So now my Frass is over on to the Winston to try and do the double bubble. 
And there goes the die. They're actually going to get to Akamai. They're going to punish. So they drop down. They're actually actually able to get out. Get some healing. That is a nice die from Villanova. Now can you capitalize on it? Math dealer doesn't have oh. ultimate quite yet. My Frass may be getting a little bit too deep. I can forgive the, the missed up the first time, but my Frass, you got to realize that if you don't have the angles, you just don't have the angles. Maybe you focus on something that's a little bit more within reach. A little bit more accessible take out you know some of the weaker members you know you, you wiver got an excellent target still for those dives you don't necessarily have to go for that widow even though she a very high value pick yeah she would be the value you want but maybe not the value you need this river god gets a few akamai as well hawaii full hole hollywood i believe for the first time today and now they got a very clear win condition to get on series point just to get a tick on that point and it is also a comp it is for the offense you love those die types so it's right up hawaii's alley on what they want to run the question is for nova what is your desperation tactic because you're gonna have to hold for four minutes if you want to draw i would not be surprised uh if we saw something along the lines of bastion come out bastion we used to see bastion hang out on cafe for a long time with something along the lines of an orissa sigma maybe both if you really want to invest in that shield commitment uh, but usually something that's a little bit more mobile or something that relies on movement a bit more uh, tends to get tripped up by these teams that are a little less coordinated. But it doesn't look like Villanova's going to lean on that strategy. In fact, they are going with that Lucio, with that Reinhardt, with that D.Va. Kind of makes me wonder what they intend to do here. I wonder. Uh, Nova's over onto the Bastion now. So that'll be something to keep an eye on as Hawaii's going to have to deal with them. They also don't have two shields or a mercy pocket, so not going to be as uh, hurtful as they could be. But yeah, I'm curious uh, the plan from Hawaii. It might have been what we were talking about before the Nova attack, pushing that left side. But is going to swap last second over to the Winston, so it's going to be the full dive. They're going to try and dive onto this back high ground where the entirety of Villanova is sitting, with the exception of Maya Frass, who's going to be trying to touch that opposite high ground. And Nate the Cat is going to be pouring in bullets, uh, really enabled by that damage boost, uh, by the run shield, by all the resources that are being committed there. Akamai, however, going to be trying to get over the shield, take any shots that they can, and now the dive going to be committed from Hawaii. We see Napoleon and Matthew are going in at the same time. You love to see that Matrix being used, preventing that Bastion from getting those shots off into the Winston. University of Hawaii looking incredible right now. Everybody from Villanova already going to be dead and buried. First tick, not long for this world. University of Hawaii taking Hollywood just as fast as we like. Yeah, just as fast as they would love is 2-0 now, the series score. And we're not in a half hour into this series as Akamai play the game. Sometimes, you know, the Widowmaker pick me like, oh, you know, you're throwing. Why are you going to make her if you're not going to get picks? Uh, Hawaii did not have that issue with Akamai. One, hits a few shots where his teammates can finish it up, as well as the right It's not always the finishing blows, but consistent damage as well as headshots from Akamai. It's consistency. Hawaii, again, they're doing exactly what they need to do to win the series, and that's about all they really needed to do tonight. As they're sitting mid-table, they can try and 500, and close to a 500 to win tonight, just one round away. But... We're going to go to break. We're going to get Villanova a little bit of time to try and figure out what their game plan is for Full Sky after this.
Hello, welcome back, folks. A quick break, perhaps a quicker game ahead of us, University of Hawaii versus Villanova. And Villanova's not been having the best look so far, Twin. No, luck has not been on this side. And as well as, you know, I think just Hawaii's playing extremely well. There's nothing you really say bad about Hawaii's performance. Just because they've stayed composed. They know exactly what they're doing. Yes, uh, I, I was just to maybe not fully composed. And the post was, you know, having fun near the spot doors on Lee Jang. But, again, doing exactly what they need to do. Villanova, you worry a little bit with them being 2CP. I believe they're going to be on the attack first again. I'm not 100% certain on that. We haven't gotten into uh, the actual game quite yet. But if they are on the attack, I want to see some dive. Because all they've really shown so far is Sigma Hog and as well as just right arc. So I would love to see them maybe try a dive. It is Nova on attack. So I am very curious to see if they're going to run that dive. If they don't run the dive, if they run the normal rust that I sadly expect them to run. As long as they try and take high ground and go from there, you know, fields open. We are getting the word that we are going to be heading into the map here in just a little bit. But overall, Villanova, it's kind of the story we have to play here. They, If they want to come victorious, as monumental as the task as that might be, they'd have to go now a perfect reverse sweep. They'd have to, to basically run the gauntlet against Hawaii and... That's that's a huge feat. I think you just look at the the one Volskaya map for now. Uh, Ins coin might be what Villanova has to do because they might be out of lives here after this. Yeah, they're getting close to being out of lives. That is, that, that was a great analogy there. As they are gonna be running the rush like they have been without the Lucio, with Happy Sparrow this time going with Nate the Cat in the air, and I believe now, uh, Maya Frass is back on DPS. Uh, Taiga now back. On tank. So curious to see how that kind of changes it up for Villanova. Zen's going to stay on that tank. Uh, Nate still on the uh, so in DPS role. Hawaii, they're going to keep going this ball comp. And I honestly don't blame them. It's been working well for them all night. And reps is more reps, especially when they play a team like Colorado next week that is going to give them everything they have and more. Villanova now going to be running out of the gates. Well, not running. They uh, have gone back to not using the Lucio, which is fine. We saw it come out once, and I, I said I wouldn't be upset about it if we saw it at least change once. To it, so I won't be. Um, but we are going to be walking, hunting at a casual pace outside of spawn. Akamai still going to be on this Widowmaker trying to land those shots. But Zen able to use that shield a little bit more proficiently here in these situations where... The choke's a little bit more narrow, Akamai, not going to be able to reach that extreme high ground. Immortality field going down quite early. As soon as it does break, Mifris going to be taken down by a Wombology. Immediately rest, but then Happy Sparrow basically going to be trading their lives. Wombology still in the back line. Wrecking Ball going to be joining him. And that echo not even going to be able to get away was almost into the safety of spawn. Yeah, Wombology goes big for four, and they basically will have full spawn next by Villanova already making a spawn. Mifras. They're going to try and challenge the Widowmaker of Akam. That is a challenge I would not personally take. Um, but my friends, you know, again, I respect them at least trying to go for it. You know, if you can take out their Widowmaker and you have one, opens up a lot of alleys and a lot of sight lines. If you can do it, Minefield goes down early, though, and it's going to be held a choke. Problem here is that my first is have to now be dealing with that tracer as well as trying to win their shots. And just immediately getting spanked by the, the diva turned around. Maybe a little bit of a jump scare for the sniper player, but Wombology not going to be you know creeping around behind right into the faces of these supports of these tanks of anything that they can turn their attention to, shredding the opposition. And Taika is not going to be a quick death on this baby diva. No, they're going to get staggered out. They're like, oh, you guys are touching the objective. Let's go. Time and then, oh, that was a sick shot. Um, so it's going to be, what, 145 by the time Villanova can truly start pushing in. Unless they start without their D.Va, which, oh, never mind. They're just going to push without their D.Va. So see with the Lucio in play. Paul Spam goes in. My friend's able to dodge. Certainly for the rest of his team, uh, they're not able to do the same for the rest of that damage. Oh? And an opponent's almost taken down, but you're going to be able to get out. And I feel like Mifras should have been a little bit more alert, seeing that D.Va immediately going up to the high ground, and then should have expected the D.Va to use those boosters to catch up. But the opponent has the self-destruct. 
Druck might be waiting for the posturing from Lenovo to really throw it out there. Yeah, kind of just waiting like, all right, when are you guys actually going to push? You know, who's just going to stand here holding down left click and now going... Actually, not going to send it in quite yet. Going to try and focus the Widow. Now going to focus the opposing D.Va. And they might even need this fight. It's Immortality's all already used. And they can just push W in the team with Rally. Able to get a few Villanova. It just... Oh, well, 360, sure. You hit three. Uh, the rest of your team is dead, so they can't really follow up on it. But they at least hit the Shatter. Or 180, sorry, not 360. And Villanova now looking at one or two fights where they're going to have a few ultimates. If they're going to win this fight, it has to be a huge bomb for them. Look, Twin, we're, we're casters, we're not geometrists, so I, I'll, I'll forgive you for not knowing the angles perfectly, but it's going to be the Infrasites coming out here. Diva Bomb does finally connect or get thrown out, excuse me. Immortality Field gets taken down. Nobody drops up from the Diva Bomb. Uh, from Hawaii, oh. what does go down from the side of Villanova? It's going to be River God taken down, and it, it's not really going to change the pace of this fight at all. No, not really. Zombology goes huge again, gets a few more. And now this is going to be waiting at choke. Like, all right, when are you going to try and touch? Because it's 10 seconds left. Wombology is just causing chaos in the back line, being a distraction. Caused even more of a time delay for Villanova as their flight to Hawaii is going to get shut a little early here at Akamai. Because that is just unfortunate. This is, I believe, the third set of mines we've seen from Matthew or Akamai not quite getting the lift that they wanted to on that overpass. Not gonna be too bothered though, because nobody on the side of Villanova it seems to notice this one. The bad taste getting bounced right in front of her doesn't even turn attention. Could have perhaps been an opening there, at least make her push back, reposition a little bit. But Wimbology gonna be taking advantage, getting two kills. The DMAC with the pulse bomb and securing the point for Hawaii, making sure Nova can't touch at all. Yep, and it's gonna be another full hold coming out from Hawaii. We saw it on Hollywood, we're gonna see it again on Volskaya. And at this point, if you're Hawaii, you know, in like all right, we're probably gonna win this series. Gonna go to seven and eight, but you still gotta get the job done. They have a little bit of doing it as well as again everything. When when Bob G is on time of his life, he, he's just all right. Gonna run around, get eliminations on Tracer, and then uh, you know, just keep uh you know, going as we will. And you know this might be the first time I'll say it's unofficially, but I believe uh, according actually you know it's official according to our wonderful satellite. First time all season that one stream, aka EGF Overwatch, will not have a map go, will not have a 2CP map go to point B. That is crazy. I mean, I don't know necessarily if this is a surprise given our final game of the night, but it's well, surprising that it's happened all night, is, is yeah. I think the, the point, the, over, the overarching storyline, if you will. Yeah, considering if we didn't even get to look at point B, you know, we had a lot of great offensive teams like Delaware and UTA, neither. Hey, well, so the UTA pushed first and they couldn't, and then Delaware couldn't even get more than the tick. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a weird storyline today that you really don't expect in the se uh, second to last week in the regular season. Nova now just hanging out in the back. I'm going to try and give my frass that shield. To win that window 1v1. Oh, somebody this. There you go. Well, we see the first kill go out in favor of Zens, but now that hog's just kind of fishing around, but nobody's there to even touch point. What, is it? what a disappointing way for things to end. I mean, maybe there was a chance for Villanova. They got the first kill, but then just. Yep, everything kind of fell around them. Um, the man of the album, Bology, with the play of the game. Um, you yeah, know, that was a weird ending, is they're all kind of just, uh, yeah, hiding up there, and then they also get taken out one by one, and it's not even like they got to drop, I believe, we were looking at uh, the Hot hog the entire time, but, there's, there's not many words to describe that series, right, it's kind of in Villanova's season, as a whole, to be honest, and this is their final regular season game, they have no next week, so they're ending the regular season 0-16, one map to their name. It's obviously a rough pill to swallow. You wouldn't wish it upon anybody to have this season, but it's just the reality of it that they've had so far. So you got to think for them, you know, going to the Eastern Conference tournament. Maybe something happens. Um, but 
you gotta think probably going against Mare and not Mare, uh, Yukon for that first game. So, you know, you can try and prep for Yukon all you want, but it may be not the ending for the season. Well, not the ending of the season, but fortunately, we do have an ending to the stream that everybody, I'm sure, will enjoy. We will be having an interview with Hawaii here in just a little bit, folks. But first, we are going to be taking a quick break, so make sure you stick around because we're not quite done. We will be back in an interview from Hawaii. Hello, folks, and welcome back. We are here. We are in the interview booth, and it may be dark for Twin Salt and myself, but as you can see in our interview booth, Nepotis, still nice and shining out there. Nepotis, hello, welcome. A big congratulations, my friend. 
Yeah, nice to be here. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, I want to ask about your team's mindset. I've been asking about it for all the teams I've been talking to lately, but we're getting towards the end of the season. What's the mindset like for Hawaii at the point? Uh, really, we just, like, practice what we're what we, we've been comfortable with. Like, we have that comes for, like, most of our maps. Uh, but, like, we usually adapt to any team that we come across. Uh, like, if you see that their our pro is bigger, better than their pro, we pick the raw maps or like we do the like dispersal for any other kind of like ball comps or anything like that. So yeah. All right. And you know, the ball comp was definitely strong today, that's for sure. Uh so obviously, you know, EGF's not the only league you guys compete in. You guys are competing in the uh uh Blizzard Collegiate yeah. League right now, uh making top thirty two right now. So how is it playing in two separate leagues? How does that improve the overall team dynamic? Uh it's definitely hard at times because we I have a hard time finding scrims to fit in between our school schedule and two tournaments. So it's actually doing pretty well. Uh, we actually had to drop one of the tournaments because we were in three tournaments. Uh, but we dropped that because uh, we couldn't be barely any time for scrims at all. It was straight just like tournament day after tournament day after tournament day. Yeah, definitely. So now we're looking ahead to the sub conference championships and for overall playoffs, what's the goals for the team as you look ahead? Uh, right now, we're trying to hit like top 16 in the league for uh, for Overwatch League and for EGF. Uh, I'm not sure we're just going to go as high as we can. It'll be fun doing it. All right. Well, having fun doing it and certainly giving the folks at home a nice fun show while you do it, Nepotis. Thanks for hopping in here answering a few of our questions. And before we let you go, as usual, I do like to offer you the chance for any shout outs, friends, family, your team, your enemies, whoever you want, give me that up. My coach is a pretty good guy, and also uh, never watch. Pretty great, love it. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, fantastic, Napotis. Once again, thank you for coming in here. And in case I haven't said enough, a big congratulations, my friend. Thank you so much. And with that, twin, we are about ready to wrap things up here for night. A little bit longer as games that end with Hawaii usually go, but that's just the way it goes. I couldn't be happier to be going in the late night with some fantastic speech at Overwatch. Yeah, it's a great night, you know. I've been here all day, you know. It's been a and, you know, you want nothing else. We got one more week of red season action before, excuse me, uh, as we go into postseason action with the conference tournaments overall uh, playoffs after that but we still got csgo valorant both tomorrow rocket league playoffs in valorant on saturday and more rocket league playoffs on sunday who wouldn't want some rocket league playoffs? We got rlcs land going on in la we got our own the rocket league tournament going on here at egfc well fantastic folks we've appreciated you tuning in make sure you tune in next week we will be here same time same place EGF, make sure you tune in. But until then, please stay safe and take care, everyone. See ya.